guys. Welcome to part three of the uh, Palm RTX 100 build. So I'm printing out a new um, bottom plate, active cooling bottom plate. Dude, this thing is just crazy, crazy, crazy hot. But I'm also going to do some input tuning too as well. Put some gun for a while. I'm going to trans me out. It's like 145 at the transistors. I don't know if you probably can't see that. It's like 145. Yeah, it's crazy hot. 100, I don't know, it's 150, it's somewhere in there. But even the heat sink, I can't even touch the heat sink. So, and actually, I'm making transmit. So, I mean, unless I have a short, I need, I need a thermal camera. But everything seems to work fine. I mean, I can go on the channel when I'm talking on, you know, radio check, radio check. So, um, even on my watt meter, it goes. All right. So, um, yeah, I definitely need to get the active cooling. But what I need to do is trim the S. So my 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 10 and a half TRR is about 1.2. That I tested from my radio and master SWR meter. So my antenna, so my antenna is that tram up there, that black tram up there. Then I have a HF antenna, 40 millimeter or 40 meter going that way, and then I have a, a scanner dipole up there. That's not dipole, I forget the name of it. It's um, radial or whatever. Um, but I've had that for years. Um, and then I have that, that's like a, a TV antenna below it. So, um, so, um, yeah, so I know I'm actually, that's not a great, I'm actually, I'm picking this, the conditions are great right now, so I'm picking up all kinds of stuff. Um, but, and these are all from back east. I'm, I mean, I'm talking, I'm on the, I'm in, right on the beach, uh, in Costa Mesa, like right on the water. So, conditions are great. I'm picking up everybody from the east coast. Um, so yeah, the, but the SWR, well, the SWR, um, it's way off. So I need a transmit, right? I've already done a calibration. Uh, between the amp, it's about two, um, yeah, about, about two. It goes down as I talk, so I'm getting a lot of reflect. But the fact that I'm actually, it's reflecting when I, when I talk, it goes down. From what I read, that means you're getting a lot of feedback. So um, I guess the way to do that, so like when I have the antenna connected, sorry, I'm all over the place. So when I have the antenna connected to the radio, I'm getting about 1.2, or even on my meter, 1.2. So the way to tune that, I think the guy's channeling is a like CB historian, has a similar radio, but the input variable capacitor right here, that's the output right there. Um, so I got to tune that right there, twist it with my screwdriver, and uh, test the SWR. You know, I do have another SWR meter um, that I can put in between the radio and the thing here, but let's try this. So let me show you real fast. I've never, I've never done this before, so I don't, I'm not a, I'm, I'm, I'm a rookie when it comes to radios. It's not my uh, specialty. Um, all right, so let's do a uh, key, dead key. So we're looking at two. So I'm turning this in counterclockwise. And goes back the other way. So. Okay. So about right there is about as all I can get. It's on the radio. Um, I guess I could put an SWR meter uh, in between. Alright, we're gonna put the bottoms done. Barely got it on this printer. I normally would do it on this printer here, but I'm gonna do some like the bigger printer. But all right, so status update. So we're adding a little wire here. So when the when it powers on, when the, the thing powers on, so I don't have it going up to the, the, the always on 24/7, the main live feed. I have it on the switch feed, so it's gonna power the fan on when I turn the power on the amp on. Um, all right, so I gotta get through. I gotta. Of the plate. This should hopefully fit the. I might reprint the top too. See there, there, the fan. Like this. I had to go like this, and then so the fan will go. Where it'll come back through here, and feed in. So this is actually the bottom. So let me show you. Get it off here. All right. So originally when I designed this, I designed this uh, to either be a bottom mounted on feet, or 
top mounted, surface mounted with the four screws on the top. So at first I didn't know what I was going to do. Um, you know, I was trying to figure out the spacing. Uh, so I decided to make provisions for both. Um, I might reprint this one again, maybe. I'm not sure. So I had, again, maybe to add a little bit of foil tape in here. So I do have some copper foil tape because I'm getting rid of this metal cover. So, um, you know, I'm guessing this would probably help with interference, you know, blocking interference. So, um, yeah, here's the cover. So I might grab some of my copper tape. So this is the cover painted. Or I could redesign it and just have the bottom. But I like it the whole the whole thing in together. I like the one piece design. I'm not gonna reprint this because it just didn't turn out that good. Alright, so this whole thing just slides into the place like that. Okay, so here it is in the box. And what it is, I had the sides open for airflow because the fan's gonna be coming from the bottom. Right, okay, so you're gonna need some kind of rubber feet just so you can get some airflow underneath it. You know? Okay, cool. Alright, um, I need some M3 screws to connect it. Yeah, I think I'm going to reprint this because this just didn't turn out good on that one printer. You got, usually like when I print something, like a model, I like to print them all in the same printer. Because that way they're dimensionally accurate. You guys were wondering why I chose such a big fan. Um, well, these bigger fans, these 120, 120 millimeter fans, are a lot quieter than the smaller fans. The smaller the fan is, usually the more noisy it is. So these bigger fans are way quieter. Um, plus this one's adjustable speed too. Um, so I'm going to go through that right now. Um, yeah, I also put a little spacing, so in front of the heatsink, so there's like a couple, like probably four or five millimeters between the fan and the heatsink to give it better distribution. Like I said, it's a big heatsink, so I want to get as much cover as I can. So let's turn this on. Yeah, turn that power on. Let's turn this on. Oh, cool. I know when I tested just having the fan next to the heatsink, it made a. I mean, it basically was completely cooled it down. Like this, this uh, uh, amplifier gets crazy hot just sitting here. So without even transmitting, this thing gets crazy hot. So I'm gonna try the lowest speed, barely moving. Um, yeah, I know a lot of smart people watch my my YouTube channel and they comment on this stuff. And so, what do you think? Do you think that this this fan is gonna create interference or feedback? You think I should put like some kind of capacitor or some kind of filtering? Like I'm not sure if this is gonna create. I'm not like I said. I'm not an RF person really. So, um, yeah, this I'm wondering if this will actually pick up like a like a no put like a noise on the AM radio, even though it's on the actual positive side. So, it's basically on on the same side as this wire. So, um, all right. So let's try that. I'm gonna let this thing run for a little bit, and we'll come back at the lowest setting and see how the heatsink feels. All right. So this is my final variation of this box so yeah now that i have it working i have it the way i like it um i'll put this up the thing reverse but i'm gonna upload the other one too it has a top mount so if you want in case you want to top mount this i mean these things are from the 70s so i don't even know how many of these things still exist um yeah it's not usually something you throw away just because it's such a cool little device but um all right so i'm redoing my area over here to do my ham radio stuff i ordered a new uh i've got a ebay uh, bid i guess i want an ebay bid on uh for like a palomar like a really big you know watt meter just because this, this little cheaper ones that can only do 100 watts so i want to be able to see what this thing is doing so yeah i'll make another video about that when i come in when it comes in but so now i gotta figure out um i go through this radio i mean it, i mean i did actually kind of mess with this ssb thing but that's plus i have this one but i really just i want an ssb radio i don't want to mess around i mean i want to probably go on channel 30 at lower sideband, so. Um, all right, cool.